Why, hello, it's Robbie from Southern California on a semi-cloudy day. Still hot though, right Kitty? And we're gonna do a zip around the deck today. I hope everybody's doing great because I have a lot to say. Look at the deck. All this stuff? Really, I'm concentrating on a lot of stuff that came up on its own. Nothing has been purchased here. I don't even think there's any seeds that have been purchased here. And plants that came up from last year. I do have some exciting stuff to show you. Let's just do this quick and go through. Here is that Swiss chard. Was going to pull it out. One of my subscribers said, don't pull it out. Trim it back. Leave it. I did. And look at this. Beautiful, young, sweet leaves coming from that Swiss chard. Here is some parsley. And this is just a way of layering. I've got a baby walking onion in there. And when I water it, it keeps the water underneath, which is really helping that Swiss chard to grow. Celery came up on its own. And this is interesting. I've had to keep this covered with a wire basket. It's a dazzling blue kale, and I've had to keep a basket over it because something would come at night, some rodent, and chew it to pieces. Well, now that I had popolo growing here, and this is what it was, and it was dropping all kinds of seeds right in there, the popolos come up, and it, I really had a struggle to get the basket off the popolo. I tore a lot when I first did it, but I've had it uncovered now for Oh, five days, nothing's touched it. So the popolo that some people can't stand the taste, that really smells strong, whatever was coming here to eat it has stopped. It doesn't even know it's there, I guess. It smells the popolo and says, uh-uh. Let's see, just a little old tomato plant here, throwing a couple tomatoes, and then it just lost one now. So that's not doing much. And this is my oregano. It's really crammed tight in there. I just threw the popolo on top. And it's struggling because it, the roots are just impacted. But this is my oregano and it's really taken off. Even the tomato plant's looking better on the top. Interesting. Here's my stevia, stevia that I had trimmed back and a lot of it had died while well, it's coming back and some lettuce in the background also layered. This is just gorgeous. This is just sow thistle. I'm leaving that still for the birds due to our drought because they love the seeds. Oh, some baby walking onions there. Another tomato plant. Some orange mint and then this is well this is something that kind of was created here it's a hybrid of some sort it's a cross between i think collard there may be dazzling blue kale and it might be three-way because it might have been a split plant that po got pollinated again by something else and it grows really nice big leaves so that's been doing good that's just the cutting parsley this is all parsley seed so i'm going to be able to grab that crush it and just throw it all over the yard tomato plant coming up in here this basil is interesting this basil is from last year and I was getting ready to pull it out and look at the massive comeback it's doing now I don't take the flowers off in the seeds because I know it will grow better because the hummingbirds are feeding on it but look at this I've got plenty of new baby basil coming up along with some dill and some purslane coming up in there and then that's all lettuce falling in there so that's coming up so I've got plenty of basil I don't have to worry about it and some sage there and this is a celery plant that's got its own container because it really will suck a lot of the nutrients as well as water out of there celery gets a massive root on it and this is all on a chair I don't have to bend down or do anything it's right there and look at the pepper plant from last year look what I found this morning is that cool? I think it's an Italian pepper. I'm not sure. Could be an orange one. Could be a hybrid. Nothing planted in there yet. This is sow thistle. I'll probably take that out and see if there's any lettuce in there or get some lettuce in there. Let's see. What else is going on over? Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's turn around this way. Oh, this. This is just some stuff. I'm going to get some seeds going. I've got some seeds starting in here and more in the house. This is from um, the squash I made the other day. It's a um, gray squash. Black Beauty squash and Cocosel seeds. I don't know if the seeds are mature enough, and yes, they're rotting, but you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to throw it in the tote and see if any of them grow, and if it doesn't, it'll just compost down. And then here I'm starting some seeds, and when they start, I can move them into the garden. Some more cucumbers and things. Do I have holes on the bottom of this? No. Do as I say, not as I do. I just want to be able to grab this, bring this in, put it on the table, and then put it back out in the morning and does it work yes I've been growing a lot of seeds that way I just don't overwater it and this is really cool if you've got any old milk jugs make some holes on the top and look you got the greatest little watering can 
It works really, really good. Okay, let's go over here. Garlic chives. More basil. That's from the other basil that you saw over there. This is some more mint. This is parsley. More garlic chives. My carrots. I've got to get them out. Finish getting them out. There's carrots in there. I saw them. Look at this. Can you see that? I've got carrots. Isn't that cool? Carrots on the deck in a floral bucket. And then tomatoes. This is gorgeous. I'm not sure what they are. They kind of look like the San Marzano, but they're not. They're a little different, so I'm not. It's probably a hybrid. But look at this. It has the blossom end rod on that. It's still growing. Now, what probably happened to this one is we had some really, really hot days, and it probably dried out, and it didn't get enough water, so it got blossom end rot, but the rest of them are fine. So that happens. I left it for now. Let it do its thing and I can cut it off and use it or use it for seeds or compost it. So let's see. So that's what you saw here. Now let's spin around here. This is nothing more than a sink. Some of you have said, what is this? It's just a sink. Gary put a sink up here. It was my idea and I have to hook the hose here and I can wash things in it. I just keep it covered so it won't get really bad from the sun. All right, that's all the pomegranate seeds that I haven't planted yet and that's just sitting there. And then here, I've got tomatillos coming up here. That came up on its own. There's my tricolored sage. Remember, it was almost dead. It was going, well, it had a celery in here, so I removed the celery, which I believe it's that one over there. And I left the lettuce, because lettuce isn't too invasive when it comes to other you know, plants growing. The root system isn't that big, and I'm gonna collect some seeds and let the goldfinches come in and get it. But this was almost on its way out, and now it's made a beautiful comeback, and I've got a cutting in my pizza garden. Let's see, walking onions and then tomatoes. Let's look at the tomatoes, isn't that cool? All these tomatoes, I can't even tell you what they are. They're just coming up from last year, but you know what? They grow that good, that is fine with me. The last of my onions, and I've been pulling, I'll, I really, well, I'll pull it, see? Look at that, I come out here and I take the onions. I store them outside right now. Gary's been bringing in tons of onions from his garden, but that's the last of my onions and I'll get something planted in there. Chocolate mint, more tomatoes growing. Tomatoes everywhere. Tomatoes everywhere, no effort. They just came up and I let them do its thing. I always layer by putting flower pots in these totes that creates an area where there's always water even on the hottest day it will be under the pots more parsley that went to seed and boy did this go to seed more tomatoes back here more tomatoes all the way up you know i want to talk about the tomatoes in a second garlic chives more tomatoes probably a midnight snack or breads or a high bread and then more parsley and here's some more tomatoes here that are ready to be picked there's just tomatoes a hundred plus tomatoes in there if you can see this let me step back for a minute. See how I put the stakes up like two years ago and they're still being held by the masking tape and yarn that I used? I love yarn. Think of yarn. Real yarn for clothing. That's got to be strong. It's got to be able to go through a washing machine and all that and be able to be worn. I love yarn. And I try to get different types of yarn. This is a type of yarn even though it's more of a string or a ribbon. I try to get it when they, like the 99 cent stores, get a lot of discontinued stuff. And when I see it for a dollar, I grab it. I used to get a Michael's coupon and go there sometimes and get the ones that are, you know, well, cheap and just do it. I just like yarn. It lasts so long. I've had that roll for a couple years and it's almost on its way out. See how I tied the yarn through? And do not kid yourself, it'll last for more than a year. I kind of wound it a through here. It's kind of like your string thing that they're doing with tomatoes, but I don't do it the way they do it. I've tried it and I have not had luck with it. But this way I'm guiding the tomatoes. So I've got it kind of leaning up on their leaves and they'll guide. As long as you guide the tomatoes, they'll continue to go up. So I can just do it again as they get taller. Now I would love to hear from you guys. Have you ever done the thing where they wrap the string around the stalk and how does it work for you? Because I've talked about this a lot. Those trichomes that are on the tomato plant, they're sticky and they get on your hands. They're on the whole plant. Well, I've noticed that if you put something on that and it rubs, it lets viruses or bacteria or whatever get into the plant and the plant dies. I've had a few of them where I've staked them up with the way they said with the string and they just die and I think it's just the way it's 
being rubbed on the trichomes, it's opening up a wound and I don't think they like it. This way I guide it and a lot of times I guide it by the leaves. So if worse comes to worse, they lose one leaf, but they don't lose well, you don't lose the entire plant. I just did that. I just moved something and tried to tie it up and lost the entire plant. They say, take young plants, drop them all the way in the ground. I don't do that because if they're too big, you can lose them. So keep that in mind. So I'd love to hear if you've ever tied up a tomato plant and after you staked it up, tied it up, it died. That would be interesting to hear from you guys because I have seen it. So I like guiding, just simply guiding it up. You know, like I always say, you do what works for you. See, it just, it's not tied around the, the main stalk. Everything is just guided up. And if you're getting yarn and you're just going out and you're really going to buy something you like, try to get something that's flat. It won't cut the plant. And this, boy, does this last. I'm telling you, what you, let me walk over here. What you see here on top of this little solar light bulb, just for fun. That's from last year, and it's still going strong, and a lot of this is tied from last year. Okay, so you've seen everything here. Let's see, my strawberries. I had, I had a great big one yesterday. I am doing fantastic with a bucket and holes, five-gallon bucket growing strawberries. I know, I should have done a video. This was so big and so good, and I didn't share it with anybody. Well, nobody was around. So anyway, you know what I do? I take the caps and after I eat a strawberry, I throw it in the ground. And why do I do that? Well, I'm composting it, but I've also done that and had baby strawberry plants come up from the seeds. Just a little idea if you want to do that. Purple basil came up from last year's plant. See all these seeds? Sometimes I pull them, drop them, and forget them. There's a little celery back there too. I've got red vein sorrow back there. And of course, my walking onions that are walking everywhere. Well, you've seen, this is the backside of what you've just seen. Okay, let's go here. Nothing here, just sorrel seeds that came up. I still have to move that red vein sorrel. I've got a zucchini in a five gallon bucket. This is a square bucket, but it's a five gallon bucket. In the beginning, they were all dying. My fault, but they were all turning yellow like those. See, there's another one back there. And no joke, nine days ago, I came out here and I thought, I'm going to have to hand pollinate. I can't get lazy. They are the easiest thing to hand pollinate. And I've got a lot more to say about squash bugs. We'll get into that another time too. But you can hand pollinate that. So let me show you the video that I actually did nine days ago. And that is being, you know, that's ready to pick now. And you'll see what I did and how big it is and how I saved that squash. So here's the squash plant. Now this one, let's see if we can get you in here, has had multiple squash. There's one. Let's see if we can get you in there. There's one. There's another, another one in the back and you go, wow, that looks bad. It does look bad. And there's even a third one. It was only throwing female flowers. Now I've got a bunch coming up that are both females and some males. Now there's a female flower. What I did was, I was one-handed. I didn't have a camera person. So I took the petals off this male flower. I'm going to now pass my camera to my camera person. I wish you were. And can you just hold this for a minute? I want to show how, tell me when you got it. And here is the flower. This is a female flower, as you can see. This is a male. There's no fruit there. I took the petals off. So you see that these were the petals. We don't need the petals for anything. Now you just get in there and just rub it in there, get inside, and do the whole thing really good, just in case no bees come up here. Now what I'm going to do, that should be good enough, is I'm going to take this whole thing off, and I'm going to actually leave it in there. So if any ants or critters, I'll leave big parts of the flower in there. If any ants or critters get in there, they're going to crawl over everything. And now I've got both, the female flower and parts of the male flower. That's all there is to it. That's right, you eat squash too. So that was it. I had Gary take the camera from me so I could show you how easy it is. Yes, you do need a male flower to hand pollinate a female flower, but if you've got multiple plants going, just take it. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be a zucchini. It could even be a pumpkin. It will work. 
So that is how easy it is to hand pollinate. So we're going to get a lot into that very, very soon. Walking onions and of course, more tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Dill. Oh, I had dill seed. Boy, did that smell good. I'm just going to make pickles. And you know what? I've been eating my cucumbers faster than I can make pickles. But I've also been making a cucumber drink that I absolutely adore. And so I want to get more cucumbers growing. Let's see, another, let's see, is that, yep, another tomato plant under here growing. Then I've got some walking onions and a little moringa, but look at this. Up, 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 up. Great big moringa. This is from last year. Boy, has this made a comeback in here. And yes, I do throw leaves. As I walk around and I see leaves, brown leaves, I will shove some in there and sometimes put it under the flower pot. See how it sends its roots up? Can you see the roots? To be under the flower pot. So this way it's feeding on whatever I'm throwing in there. Then I've got mint, more mint, another tomato plant. Here I just, I haven't done anything in here. This is just Swiss chard, green Swiss chard. And I've got walking onions in here all over. Just so cool. This is all from last year making a comeback or seeds that were just sitting here. But I really wanted to share the squash with you. Look at the tomatoes. Absolutely gorgeous. See how I just guide the plants? I'm in the guiding. Just, hey, lean up, buddy, and go up. And it keeps, and it works. And then I'll bring another string as it gets taller that way. But I don't twist it. I don't like this thing where you take it and you wrap it. I don't even like doing this. But see how loose it is? When you wrap it, you're really taking off all those trichomes and you just are opening up for problems. That's why I want to hear if you've had problems. Maybe it was just me. All right, and then here I've got more walking onions and then here I've got some parsley coming up. This is parsley. Gary likes it. Let me try it again. To me, I don't like the taste. I don't know. Yeah, it's all right. Kind of lemony. I know it's a big thing people add it to salad, but you know what? It looks pretty. He likes growing it, so I let it grow up here, and then he can grab the seeds, and he throws a bunch in his garden. Green sorrel. This is another green Swiss chard coming up down here. And then we've got more parsley that went to seed here, and then you saw the celery that's there. And then here I've got garlic chives and more parsley. I just see, I, and here's some lettuce coming up too now. I just throw handfuls in here and let it grow. So that's basically it. What else? Oh, here, you know, some of the tomato plants you see around, I will say that I have moved a couple in here. I'll take them from an area that's got a whole bunch of tomato plants and then I'll just stick it in. And you can easily move the tomato plants when they're young. Now, let me show you here. Here is this thing I made, and I do believe I have the video up on this, on how easy this is to make, to cover your plant, which it worked really good to save the broccoli, but because it was completely covered, is this cool? It gets flowers, but it was covered, so there's no seed pods. See how there, there's no seed pods? Because it never got fertilized. The plant's gonna keep growing. So if you've got an issue with your broccoli plants, anything green, and you're not gonna collect the seeds, cover it. The plant will grow beautiful. You just won't get seeds, but you don't need the seeds. You've probably got plenty of seeds on your own. And then this one, I did differently. I wrapped it around with let me see, I can't step back far enough. With three tomato steaks, see? And then I just wrapped some tool around, just close pinned it. I didn't even do anything. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing. This kept any rodent that was getting in there eating it up. And Kitty wasn't happy. But being that I left this open, I am getting broccoli here. And there was seeds on here before. See the seed pods? That is a seed pod. So I'm getting seed pods on the one that had the open top. I am not getting seed pods on the one that had the top completely closed. So that's basically it. I wanted to take you on a quick spin because I haven't done it for a while to show you how beautiful everything is growing. I'm really happy with it. I've had no work. I've been working on all my other gardens. And I mean, I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to show you the deck? I haven't done anything. And then I stepped out here like yesterday and I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> I haven't done anything. Look, look at the food. I come out here, I grab onions. I did plant onions in the beginning of the year. That's true. I come out here, I need parsley. I need, want to make some mint tea. Um, what do I not have up here? I didn't plant any melons this year. I don't know if I will or I won't. I might. I did not plant radishes. We planted a lot of radishes last year and we didn't even eat them all. So I thought, well, if we're not eating a lot of radishes, I'll plant something else. 
Tomatoes, though, I really like growing a lot of tomatoes because, as I talk about, these are so easy to pick, wash, and if you don't want to eat them, dry them and pop them in a plastic bag and freeze them. The best way is put them on a cookie sheet, a small cookie sheet, put them in the freezer, let them freeze like marbles, and then throw them in a plastic Ziploc bag, and you'll have them all winter then. Don't use them now. Use them when you don't have any, and then when you need tomatoes, you've got tomatoes. So... Now you got to see the deck looking pretty, pretty good. I'm happy and I've got pretty much everything I want up here. And I prefer small tomatoes. This is probably the biggest tomato I'll be growing up here. A little bigger than a cherry. But I like the small tomatoes because they grow so quick. And the squash, can you imagine in days? This was ready to be picked days ago. Now I'm going to lose some of the others because I haven't hand pollinated a lot of that. So I'm gonna to have to continue to hand pollinate because apparently there's not enough bees up here. And that's why it's so easy to grow squash because it's so easy to hand pollinate. So oh, I just love the color of these. Aren't they gorgeous? So that's it. I think we're done now. Let me see if there's some broccoli for Kitty. You want to see her, Kitty? So that's it. So with that, and now you got to see the deck, how it's doing, and I am quite happy with it. And I'm going to probably add a little bit more to it. But I've got all my herbs and everything I need here. And then I've got my little work table to get some stuff done. And can't wait till these seeds start so I can get these out in the garden too. Like I said, I'm composting that. And don't forget, masking tape is such a good, good thing. And see, I'm almost done. I've had this for years, and I'm almost done with it. Love using yarn or string, especially for clothing. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.